Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are back out on the California Delta. It's about 7 a.m. Beautiful, gorgeous morning out here. Water's calm, sunny skies. As we say, especially this time of year, I don't know if that's gonna make the fishing any easier for us, but one thing's for sure, it's gonna be a beautiful day out here on the water. So right now, 7 a.m., we are at the absolute high tide. Lately, I have been favoring that last hour of incoming, or first hour of outgoing, so I've been favoring water conditions that have been higher. I like it when that water's higher. I feel like I'm just getting more bites when that tide's happening. So right now, we are at the absolute high tide. It's gonna be dropping all morning. Morning. And uh, honestly, that's the reason we're out so early is I wanted to at least try to take advantage of these first couple of hours because as we know on the Delta, tides can be everything. And uh, I don't know, I'm just not feeling a low tide fishing day today. So I'm hoping from at least seven to nine o'clock, we can get on some fish. Then we'll just, uh, we'll scramble around at low tide and see if we can find something. That is the plan today. Hopefully these fish cooperate today and uh, take you guys with me. Another day of fishing out on the California Delta. Let's see what happens. Hey, short run, only about four minutes from the launch, but like I said, I want to just start fishing. Don't want to jinx myself before the day's even started, but I think it's going to be a tough day. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. It's a terrible attitude. Don't have that attitude, guys. Let's start out with this dude. This is what did damage for us last time on a tough day. First thing in the morning, we got some rock. I know there's some wood up here. Seems right. If they're here, they should bite. Terrible first cast. You guys know how that goes. Get that first cast out of the way. What's that? Is this your dock broke? Oh no, it's not. Oh, it's Thank not you. Okay. It's either a really good thing or a really bad thing. <laughs> you know? Right. That early. I know, right? <laughs> you too, guys. All right, let's start. Not a keeper, but a fish cranking. Nice of those guys to check just in case it was my dock rope. It was not my rope, but I always appreciate that kind of thing out on the water. Yeah, I mean that was textbook. Right around this point right here we got some rocks and wood. There should have been a fish there and there was. There was. Oop. Like another bite. It's just the wood. That's a big one. That's a real big one. Oh my god, it's a real big one. Jeez. 
See, that's why we come at this tide, because that cast right there may not even be in water in three hours. Fatty. Cheater jig. Dude. So sick. That's a pre-spawn fish right there. Okay. The jig comes through again. Sweet. Good old Delta Cheater jig. I didn't even feel that bite. Take my jig already. Come on, dude. No. How am I gonna lose a jig this fast? Got it. Probably at the expense of my guides. It's like the second cast of the crank. Little dude, but crawfish style baits today, I guess. Okay, crank crankbait bumped something too right there. I don't know if it was a piece of wood or what. But as soon as it hit that wood, it, that fish bit. No! No! Oh my god! No! What am I doing? That was another big in too. Letting that jig soak right up in the toolies. Oh my god, why was my drag so loose? God dang it! Okay, they're biting right now at least. Oh, son of a gun! So happy yet so disappointed at the same time. And just wonder, the wonder on the Delta, lost big fish that you don't see. Could have been a three pounder, could have been a nine pounder. God. It was the same situation though. That little Thule clump was in about the same depth as the other one that we got the bite on, or the, the three pounder on. Maybe a little pattern, maybe. dude what are you you are pulling can't be that big always got me wrapped up in the vine where are you at oh my god it's a big old striper wouldn't you know dang okay well I'm not upset about it but oh dude look at you just gonna make this easy on everybody here. The hook stayed in his mouth. Pulled the hook right off. Shoot. Okay, I got the hook. 
All right, let's just get rid of you. Thank you, sir. All species are biting today. Not a bad one. No keeper. All right, let's put this guy up. This is kind of perfect because I try to answer the comments, as you guys know, as best as I can. But one comment for sure, one question that keeps coming up is the knot I tie for my jig, my crankbaits, any fluorocarbon application. I'm gonna show you right now. I hope you guys can see. Actually, you know what? Let's turn the other way so you can see better. I'll do my best to show you how I tie this knot. I don't even know what the name of this knot is called technically. I think somewhere I heard it's called the Jimmy Houston knot, so I've been calling it the Jimmy Houston knot. So again, this is all fluorocarbon applications. Take your bait, take your tag end, you go through split ring, you go back through the split ring, okay? So you've doubled your line, right? You're gonna take your line. You're gonna cross this tag end over and pinch it. See, you pinch it right here, okay? You crossed them and you pinched it. Now take this loop, this tag end, Wrap it three times. There's one, two, three. Okay, I wrapped it three times. I still have this tag end. Now this little loop that you pinched, you take that tag end and you go right through that loop like so. And then you pull it tight, wet it, and then cinch it down. Okay, so when you cut this thing, you're gonna have three tag ends. And this is the fluorocarbon knot that I've been using for two years now, and it is, it's just the best fluorocarbon knot you can have. I'm telling you right now, you, you don't break off with this knot. It's just too strong. So that is the knot I use for my fluorocarbon applications. So nice and strong. Hopefully that helped you guys. But let's get back to fishing. They're certainly biting right now. And, I, and like I said, the hope was to get them at the right tide. And I think this is the right tide. So we will run out of time in the next hour or so. As far as tides go. <laughs> Everything, every time it bumps something, you feel like you're gonna get bit. Gosh, Why can't the tide just stay high all day? This fish are the tule, some of them are. I didn't even feel that fish. How is that possible? Another giant, dude. That's a giant. That's a largemouth, too. Dude, these fish are up in the tules, just rooting around. Holy heck. What a trip. What a trip. Like I said, they all feel big when they're on the jig. Yeah, but that's another solid fish, right? Another three pounder. Dang. Oh, gosh. These fish are in the tules around this bank. Just gotta go slow with it right now. Give me time to find it. Water's pretty dirty. This is the dirtiest water I've fished in a while. So let's add a little bit of glow to the to the tails, the very ends. There we go. Little JJ's magic. I've talked about it before. This doesn't look like much out of the water, but dude, you put this in the water. I mean, those tails just glow. Just the tips, you know. Just the tip. I mean, I, I can't imagine that hurts in dirty water like this. Oh man, this tide is moving. This water is dropping fast. Yeah, 
Yep, shallow. Just taking a peek, just in case. You never know. I'd be very, very surprised if we saw fish on beds. But we might see them at least shallow at some point today. Change over to something I probably should have changed over to a while ago. Stripey. Man, is that like the second cast or no, the third cast with the spinner bait? Shout out to Bobby D. Bates, sending me a little care package of spinner baits. These things are awesome. Got a bunch of different colors, but been favoring like this, uh, you know, white shad color lately, and they certainly don't mind it. Yeah, some fish around us. <laughs> Hey, I hate to say it, but I think we were kind of right with our prediction of when the, at least the, the green ones, the largemouth would be biting. You know, we uh, had that pretty good bite the first hour, hour and a half. I mean, ever since we started, the tide has been dropping. You can see it's dropping real fast now. This current's moving and the bite has seemed to have died down. But if we're going to catch striper instead, I will not complain. That is not a problem. Slowing down enough, we finally get one to bite. Yeah, righty, goodness. Finally, somebody's cooperating. Thank you, little sir. Boy, you can see, I mean, same spot we went through earlier. Tide's much lower. Water's, yeah, just about as dirty, but you gotta imagine the fish are still here. Probably sucked out a little bit deeper. Right now, I'm just going back through here with a jig, working it as slow as I can. I mean, we, I feel like they're here. It's just, I don't know exactly how they're positioned. I feel like they're more bottom oriented right now. It's not like they're swimming around, eating. I think they probably, on this low tide, related to cover, or at least are sticking on some cover, maybe even buried in the weeds. I think that's why the bite's been so tough on low tide, it's just they're harder to get to. I'm just gonna slow down with this jig, like I said, and see if we can pluck a few more out of here. The only bad thing is the Next good tide, when the water's gonna be at a, a level I like, it'll be like 4.30, and I don't, eh, I don't know if I'm gonna stay out another five hours for that. That's a strong one. Dude, you just out-muscled me. I gotta give this dude some credit. You just you just schooled me, dude. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for today's day out on the California Delta. Man, oh man, I'll tell you what, today was a perfect example as to why tides are so important. Man, if we hadn't have come the time we did, if we'd come an hour later, if we'd slept in an hour later, I'm telling you, today would have been for sure an in and out burger day. We would have been eating our sorrows away because that first hour, hour and a half when that tide was high, just like we thought, that is where all of our action came today. And as soon as it dropped, bite shut off. I don't know, like I said, this time of year, it's tough for me to fish a low tide in the summer, the spring, the fall. When that tide drops and those fish, for me at least, suck under the cover into the grass, they're more likely to bite. You know, they might come eat a frog, they might bite a punch bait, but I think those fish still do that when the tide drops on the delta this time of year, but they're just not, they're not really looking to eat, looking to bite. Yeah, just for the heck of it, we did throw the frog in, punch some of those mats, but not a single bite. So that was the day, glad we came early. But as always, thank you guys for coming along and I'll catch you in the next one.